Hi, welcome to another solar roadways video. I've done two previous videos on debunking solar freaking roadways was the first one and then the second one was pretty much uh, debunking the results, the initial prototype test results from a prototype solar pathway, it's not a solar roadway but a solar uh, bikeway in the Netherlands and this is um, solar road with no R, solar road dot NL. Link the videos in here. If you haven't seen them, they go for like half an hour. They got all the detailed analysis, math, everything else. This one will be real quick because SolarRoad.nl have just released the six month test results from this six month uh, trial. So I thought we'd take a look at it to see if the whole concept is viable or not. Let's go. Now the six month trial didn't go without uh, incident. Uh, for this thing, they actually had one of the panels like completely crack and uh, or shatter actually. And here's a photo of it, it was uh, pretty terrible. So they're looking into that, but eh, these sort of things happen with prototypes. But the good thing is we have a 70 meter long solar bikeway in the Netherlands um, that's been operating for six months and it generated, so they say. Um, in fact, here's a graph uh, showing the accumulated uh, energy output over the six months, 3000 kilowatt hours, nice round number, generated in the six month. Awesome. So what we can do now is use that figure and compare it to what you would get from a rooftop solar installation and see how it stacks up. So they put out a press release and it's been picked up by a few places and claiming that, oh, it's generated more power than what they expected. And well, they didn't really add to that, but oh yeah, it's better. The results are better than we expected. And Popular Mechanics, for example, picked up the article and said, oh, solar uh, bikeway is a shining success, pardon the pun. And you know, they're, they're talking it up as if it's you know, fantastic, it's now viable and it's better than they expected. I had quite a few people uh, contact me and comment on what do I think about it now? Well, it's not what I think about, it's what the data actually shows. Now, I had the idea that, well, I've got my own uh, solar system on my uh, rooftop, three kilowatt solar system. I've done a video, which I'll uh, link in here, um, analyzing the results from that and the payback period and showing the data and, and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, well, I could use six months uh, worth of data from my own system to compare it to their six months and see how it goes. But then I thought, well, I'm here in Sydney, Australia, they're in the Netherlands, you've got to account for solar insulation and different times of the year and all sorts of things, and that's a bit messy. So I figured, well, why don't I actually get solar data from people's rooftops nearby in the Netherlands? And I can use that over that exact same six month period that they had this trial over. That will be a real, you know, apples to apples comparisons to see how viable these solar uh, bikeways and or solar roadways are going to be. Best case, because we now have this real data. Now the site that I'm using, uh, pvoutput.org, where all of my real-time solar data goes, it turns out there's a whole stack of um, people who have also, in, in the Netherlands, who've also got their data fed in there. And there's a couple of systems with only a, w within a few kilometers of this solar roadway installation. So beauty, we can suck that data out and compare it. Let's go. So when I saw these press releases right off the bat, I sort of went, <laughs> it didn't sort of pass the bullshit test really. It sounded like, okay, yeah, it's more that it was outputting more than they expected. The 3000 kilowatt hours was more than they expected over the six months, but how much more? Nobody really tells you that. They don't tell you that in the articles. Just say, oh, it's more than we expected. Therefore, oh, it must be fantastic and completely viable, right? Well, let's look at the real data. Now, they um, claimed right at the beginning of this thing, and I've also got this in my previous uh, video as well, what they expected was 50 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. And of course, they've only been going for six months, so they've got uh, 25 kilowatt hours per square meter per six months. And I know it's not over a full year, so it's not over the full solar insulation cycle, but it's over half a cycle, which is good enough. So it has some uh, peaks and it has some troughs, and it's going to average out quite well. So the results after six months are pretty good um, to use for uh, comparisons. You don't necessarily need the full 12 months. So this is what they expected. How much did they actually get? Hmm. So as per the previous video, I estimated the width 
of the solar uh, bikeway based on the photos and, and some other stuff. And I got a value of uh, 1.75 meters wide roughly, and it's a 70 meter long cycleway. So a total square area of 122.5 square meters. So they generated 3000 kilowatt hours for the six months for the 122.5 square meters. That's 24.5 kilowatt hours per square meter per six months. They were expecting 25. It's basically exactly what they're expecting. They're, and they're claiming that, oh, it's more than what we expected. Well, yeah, they don't tell you how much more right? It's bugger all, right? I could be slightly off on the 1.75 meters wide. So, okay, let's, you know, I trust them, right? I don't think they're lying. Yes, it's more, but it's not much more. It's not spectacularly more. It's not double. You know, it's not even 20% more, you know, 50% more. It's just, ah, oh, man. So right there, it is just uh, typical marketing stuff and then the bloggers and the you know the websites get carried away oh it's more than expected so they put the headline you know a shining success and everything else makes it all viable no it's basically exactly what they expected duh so you see this sort of thing happen all the time. They say, yeah, it's better than, don't provide any data, and then just let people's imaginations take over from there. Because there's a lot of people who believe, deeply believe, religiously believe in these solar roadways and want it to work at any cost. So they'll take this as a shining example, no pun intended, or pun intended perhaps, of, yeah, this thing is so viable. So I'm going to give this solar roadways, this solar pathway, a fair go. Let's take a look at the data. As I said, I found uh, three local uh, rooftop uh, solar installations within a couple of kilometers of this uh, solar uh, cycleway. And let's take a look at the data. I will link in my sheet here uh, for those who want to see the exact calculations and can double check what I'm doing. So there's no funny business. You can go back, I'll link in all the original data, everything else. You can verify exactly what I'm saying here. So let's have a look at how good this thing is. The solar road, uh, 3,000 uh, 3, kilowatt hours for 122.5 square meters. I just copied that data down here. So 24.5 kilowatt hours uh, output per square meter. Okay, it's pretty good. It's actually better than I was expecting. So uh, Gadget Frank's uh, uh, installation was 811 kilowatt hours for 16.5 square meters. It's a little like two and a half or three kilowatt uh, roof installation, but the size doesn't matter because we've um, scaled it down. That's 49.2 kilowatt hours per square meters. And the other uh, two systems, you can see the data here uh, side by side if I overlay them. The graphs are pretty consistent. So this is pretty consistent, verifiable data, but we've got three different systems. We'll take the average. The average is 47.2 kilowatt hours per square meter. Bingo. It's about double what we get from the solar roadways. And there you go. There's your answer. How effective are these solar roadways, solar pathways? We have six months worth of real engineering, you know, undisputable engineering data here. So rooftop solar has twice the output of this solar cycle way. And that's actually pretty much what you'd expect given the losses. The fact that the rooftop ones are angled like at 30 degrees, they're not optimally angled, but they're angled, they're not tracking, uh, for example, but it's better to angle them. Whereas the solar uh, pathway or solar roadway is flat, of course, so you lose you know, about 20, 30% there or something like that for it being uh, flat horizontal on the ground. And then you've got the thick glass, of course, which has got to be on top, all that protective glass. You're going to get, you know, 10, 15% loss there. I think I used 10% figure last time. That was pretty generous, I think, in terms of loss. And then uh, they're going to heat up more because they're you know sealed inside much thicker glass they got don't have airflow going under them like ones on rooftops do and solar panel uh, output efficiency drops with uh, higher temperature so you know all these losses together you'd expect this is you know it's it's actually a pretty good result for the uh, solar uh, pathway here at um, you know only only half that of rooftop solar. So all your solar roadway supporters are probably jumping for joy. See, it's all you know it's half as good as rooftop solar. That's you know that's good enough and worth uh, the while to pave all our roads on the planet with bloody solar panels. But it's still half the output for a lot more cost. Lot 
at least double, could be quadruple the cost, let alone uh, lifetime. The uh, you know the lifetime of this thing, we haven't looked at it. It's already failed. Like within the first couple of weeks, a panel had already cracked. But okay, that's a prototype. You can do that. But oh, it like. Rooftop solar, really simple, really reliable. And as I said in the previous video, solar power technology and how you can see in my video as well, my own, the solar results for my own home uh, system, it's solar power is already a borderline marginal payback product. You have to get, you know, your 20 year life time out of it or 10 years lifetime out of it to get a viable payback. And I've done the calculations in terms of uh, dollar cost payback in the previous video, so I won't repeat them here. But, you know, these solar cycleways, solar pathways are a lot higher cost. They're going to have more maintenance, guaranteed. If you think they don't, well, you don't know much about uh, engineering at all. So, have I changed my mind on solar roadways? Well, no, not at all, because it's half the output at best. This was ideal condition. Imagine if you had it as a roadway, and I won't go into the ridiculous practicalities and, and showstoppers that are involved in using glass as a road surface. Might be okay for this cycleway, for example, in niche applications. Yes, as I've said in previous videos, niche applications, these things are going to, you know, they might be useful. You can get some energy out of them, but it's always going to be better to put them on poles, for example. Take a look at this video. This one's in South Korea. The South Koreans know what they're doing. They paved the, uh, the middle of this uh, huge multi-lane uh, freeway. They put this cycle path in the middle of it and then covered the whole thing with solar panels. Fantastic. So they're going to get uh, you know, the, mass, the same massive output as you get with the end, the lifetime that you get with rooftop solar systems and solar farms, for example. So they're doing the right thing. Not only does it uh, provide optimum output versus cost for the installation by not making it a bloody road surface or a cycle service, putting it above the cyclists and it provides shade as well. You get all the lifetime benefits. It's, it's no contest. The South Koreans have the right idea. That's how you do a solar roadway. So there you go, hopefully that's the last solar roadway video that I have to do. We've got the numbers are finally in, absolutely no dispute in it. There, they give half the output of rooftop solar systems. And then you can go calculate the, uh, the cost of building these things and maintenance and everything else to your heart's content. Rooftop solar systems and farm, uh, you know, solar farms and things like that, all the one in South Korea, very, very low maintenance cost on these things, very long uh, time frame. So you're going to get a really decent payback on those. Solar road, solar cycleways, nah, just a eh, bit of a fantasy. Niche applications for sure, otherwise, forget it. Catch you next time.